Planning and Goals Paradigm Shift in Instructional Planning In this video, we will discuss a paradigm shift in instructional planning in different aspects in the setting of the learning objectives of the lesson, the role of content and culture, the development of the four skills, speaking, understanding, listening and reading, the role of the learner, the role of the teacher, the type of materials used in the lesson, and assessment. Let's see this paradigm shift uh, with respect to the objectives of the lesson. In the old paradigm, we will say something like, this week my students will learn the present tense. Notice that this is a grammar-oriented syllabus. It pays attention to uh, this uh, distinct, discrete, a grammar point that the students need to learn, the present tense. In the new paradigm, we will be saying something like, at the end of the unit, the student should be able to talk about his or her daily routine. Notice that this is a communicative, proficiency-oriented syllabus. It's not talking about a grammar point, but about the communicative function that the student should be able to produce with the grammar learned. It's not that we won't be teaching grammar, but the objective is not teaching the grammar per se, but to um, achieve or be able to achieve a communicative function, like for example, talk about your daily routine. And with respect to content and culture, there's also um, a shift. In the old paradigm, we will say something like, this week, my students will learn the vocabulary about the city. Words like escuela, casa, edificio, calle, avenida. Notice that we are talking about just vocabulary. as a distinct thing. Um, the content is just that set of words. In the new paradigm, we will be saying something like, this week, students will understand and be able to explain the differences between an American city and a Spanish city. Notice that when we say explain, we are talking about a communicative function. So it's not just about the words, just by themselves, but there is a communicative function behind. And also notice that when we say the differences between an American city and a Spanish city, content and culture are integrated. So it's not just about learning about the city or the words to talk about the city, but to be able to express something uh, about the culture. With respect to the four skills, there used to be like a different days for different skills as if each skill was the objective of the day. On Monday, listen to a recording. On Tuesday, talk in pairs. On Wednesday, read. On Thursday, write a composition. In the new paradigm, all the skills are combined um, to achieve the communicative purpose. So on Monday, there will be a listening activity and also writing and also discussing in, in pairs, more writing. All these can be integrated in the same day. With respect to the learner, there's also a shift. In the old paradigm, the student was a passive recipient of the teaching. They might be bored or not, but they were the passive recipients. They were there to listen and learn what the teacher had to tell them. In the new paradigm, students learn not by being passive recipients of content, but by actively interacting with other students and with the teacher, and actively uh, participating in the construction of knowledge. There's also a shift in the teacher role. In the, in the teacher role in the, in the classroom. In the old paradigm, the teacher was the one who gave a lecture. In the new paradigm, the teacher is one of the participants 
in the construction of knowledge. So this is a teacher interacting with uh, all the other students. With respect to materials, in the old paradigm, the only source of material used to be the textbook. What's the material? The number of the page, the number of the lesson. In the new paradigm, there's a much richer uh, source of materials. Um, there might be a video, pictures, a map, and uh, so there's, there are images, there is text, there's multimedia. Finally, about assessment, we see this, this shift. Before, the idea was that first there is a lesson, then there is an exam, and the student receives a grade. And that's the end of the story. There's nothing else you can do. In the new paradigm, there's instruction and participation, and this should lead to self-assessment. A student should be able to see where they stand, uh, to see if they are progressive, progressing successfully towards the, the goal of the, of the lesson. There should also be a participation grade. The grade is not just about the end product or the end result, but there should be also a grade um, on the engagement, on the day-by-day -day work that the student is putting in the classroom. And finally, there will be an exam, of course, which will give a grade, but this exam should also be a source of feedback. Feedback both for the students and for the teacher. Feedback for the students because they will see feedback from the teacher and it will be a, a feedback that will help the student do better on the next exam, do better in class. But it will be also feedback for the teacher because the teacher will learn what are the weaknesses or the elements that, are, that need more work. So this, this feedback will revert into instruction and participation.